I'm David Wartowski, owner-operator of Potomac Airfield, deep here in the restricted area, known as the Flight Restricted Zone, next to the nation's capital in Washington, D.C., as well as a general aviation pilot cleared to operate in this special airspace. I'd like to use this opportunity to provide clarity and review briefly national security policies and national security procedures in a public domain to simplify matters for everyone. So let's relax, unwind, and just discuss it in a leisurely manner. Step one is the pilot applies for a special security clearance, which amounts to an interagency security clearance coordinated under the TSA. The vetted pilot is given a credential by special procedure and a PIN number, or special key, that allows the vetted pilot to create the special airspace clearances as they need, where they need, for the aircraft they desire. Let's review how those procedures are used. The vetted pilot contacts flight services by using any common telephone and making a phone call to the flight service briefer. By authenticating with the flight service station briefer with their PIN number, they can generate an authenticated freeze flight plan at the time, location, and fix of their choice. Throughout the national capital region, air traffic controllers have responsibility for different airspace sectors. Oops. Let's say in our example we're going to use the rock intersection. There is a specific controller with oversight responsibility for the rock intersection. The flight service briefer issues a freeze flight plan which includes other close hood elements that are located with the fix at the rock intersection for the time location aircraft is on. Keep in mind within the TRACON and the air traffic control other agencies are also keeping an eye on procedures and how things are working. As the vetted pilot approaches their fix, which may be a departure point or a gate, the aircraft contacts the air traffic controller with responsibility for that gate. The controller looks down and if there is a key, contacts the aircraft and issues a transponder code identifying the aircraft as a cleared pilot across multiple government and Department of Defense radar scopes and intelligence networks. The aircraft can then proceed as a known pilot within certain boundaries. Let's say, for example, instead that there is no key and that the inbound aircraft is approaching a fix or a gate or try attempting to enter the airspace without the key. The first level of escalating challenge is for the controller to yell at the pilot. If the pilot fails to respond to the controller and proceeds anyways, the second level of escalating challenge is air interdiction. The Helicopter Coast Guard air interdiction mission is to divert otherwise cooperative aircraft away from the National Capital Region. There are redundant air interdiction assets in the area, including F-16s under National Guard authority at Andrews Air Force Base. Should the aircraft ignore the air traffic controller yelling at them, the air interdiction trying to head them off, at that point, they are presumed foe, and their status changes on multiple radar screens. The defense of the National Capital Region consists of other assets in the area. These assets are defending all of the national security targets in the National Capital Region from an aircraft that's determined to ignore all escalating challenges. It's really very simple. So to review, the national security policies are to give the otherwise cooperative pilot every opportunity to be diverted away from the threat of physical destruction deep in the national capital region. It's all part of the customer service. If you have any questions, feel free to go to our website at www.potomac-airfield.com. Thank you.